Welcome to Clown Town, Population Us. I like Five Nights at Freddy's. I also happen to like plushies a little too much, and I was delighted that I saw a video circulating on the internet with redesigns of all of the Five Nights at Freddy's plush merchandise. Bizabow made a really fantastic series redesigning the plushies. She does not really have plush making experience in her own words. So today I will be going through all of the redesigns that she made as of today, which is May 13th, from FNAF 1 and FNAF 2, and I'm going to be ranking all of them. I will also be attempting to recreate at least one of these plushies by myself. If there's demand, and if this does well, I would love to share up the drafted pattern, um, but we'll see how this goes. And I'll probably also try and do a rough estimate of cost as I go along. Disclaimer, I'm ranking these based on how hard they are to make. Starting in the plushie pain zone, we're going to go over the FNAF 1 redesigns. First of all, our favorite scrunkly, Freddy. Here we've got this kind of cheap felt going on. Um, this would look much nicer. This disc part would look better with two pieces of fabric, probably minky, stitched together. You turn that inside out. Um, you could even put like a little bit of felt inside, just, just as like a stabilizer. And then you would stitch on the rest of the hat portion, and I think that would look a lot better. Wouldn't be that hard to do. After actually finishing this, it turns out it was kind of hard to do. The eyebrows here, as it goes for most of these, um, you could either do a flat piece of felt, like a small piece of felt, and then stitch that on by hand. If you had an embroidery machine, you could embroider those on a lot neater. I would prefer the embroidered look, but I'm cheap, so I don't have an embroidery machine. So I'll probably stick to my favorite method, which is sewing on felt details by hand. Um, we have a big round nose. I don't have any noses that look like this. I don't think it would be that hard to find. It's really easy to find these like cheap plushy pieces on Amazon. Um, there's a little more detail around the mouth, which would require more work, but does look a lot better than this lumpy guy over here. And if you found a nice piece of satin, I have made bows before, like I made one for a cosplay or something, and it's not that bad. So overall, factoring in these details, I would say this is like two stars. Not too bad. For an additional detail, when I mean uh, the portion about the mouth, what you can also do is you can do some plastic surgery on your plushies. And the way you would do that is you would take thread and needles and you would sew inside. So you would sew inside where you can't see and you would pull it tighter to kind of shape the fabric. Um, it's called thread sculpting. Don't ask me how I know how to do this. Okay, so note for later. I'm going to go to the fabric store. I found one nearby that seems to have a good selection. I'm going to look for Minky. Um, I'll take a look if they have Valor or not, but I like Minky. I think it's objectively a better fabric. I think it makes the plush turn out better, so I'm going to go with that first. Um, then after I get a bunch of different fabrics and different colors, I might get a couple like embroidery threads. I might need to get an embroidery needle, and I probably should get a tapestry needle too. So I'm going to look to see if they have a tapestry needle. At that point, I think I should have enough. I might either buy a pattern to use a base or I'll have to buy like a Funko or Sanchi and then sacrifice it to make a plush pattern. And what was a major lapse of judgment, I decided to take this design and use a simplified version of it. So you can see the simplified version here, but this is actually the plush I will be making. Um, it took me like several weeks, partially because of various crises that I had to avert, but ultimately I think it came out looking almost mediocre, so I'm pretty happy about that. Um, we got some details here that I actually just cut out because I was lazy. We have Purple Scrunkly. One of my favorite scrunklies, really good guy, love this guy. Um, we do have extra detail on the lower jaw, but considering that it's just kind of like bigger and rounder, I don't think it'd be that hard to pull off here. I think you might need a little bit of thread sculpting just to get this kind of shape to come out and, and be really neat and nice. Again, with the nose, I would have to go looking. I'll see if I can find an example of a nice rounder nose, but it does give it a much more, you know, cute button nose look. Um, the main detail though, <laughs> the main detail that's kind of getting me is this ear. This means that you're probably going to have to have some wiring in there. And I personally don't like to have as many like hard pieces or like plastic or metal in the plush. Um, I know for adults or collector's items, it's not a huge deal, but like, especially 
if you're designing a plush that's made for kids. I would say this would add on a little bit more effort, so just for the wire detail, we're gonna give that three stars. I ended up going to a huge fabric store. I had a great time, touched a lot of fabric, and I ended up getting most of the colors that I needed. I also ended up picking up like an upholstery needle set. I would definitely recommend this for plush making. And then I found these kind of like funny little wire cords. Um, so I figured I would use these to represent the wires on the body as detailing. I don't really know what they're called, but it was pretty inexpensive. Um, so I picked up a few different colors just to be creative. Now we have Chicken Nugget. Um, great character. I really like this detail up here. I think this actually makes it easier to make it neater. Um, this looks like it'd be really easy to have a few pieces. So you'd have two pieces for each, sew them together, bring them inside out, stitch them on top. It'd be really solid, really nice. Again, with the eyebrows would look a lot nicer embroidered. This mouth definitely is giving Webkin's vibes. It's giving that silly little goose vibes. I think that's some inspiration definitely in this design. Um, an unexpected portion that might be difficult is the let's eat bib. Again, I don't have the exact image. Someone's probably ripped it, but I'd have to make sure that I print it out on the fabric and that would be a bit of a pain. Plus the magnet and cupcake portion. The magnet itself is not a huge deal. The cupcake itself is also not that complicated. It's just kind of a round shape um, with a little bit of detail, but it would be a little bit more effort. Not too bad. It's not in a very important place since it's just this plush arm. I'd give this one four stars for the trouble. So in the end, I ended up getting these official plushies off of Walmart. I'm pretty sure they're not fake just because I got them through a third party like that, but who knows, maybe they're fake. I wouldn't know. So anyways, one of these two guys is going to be sacrificed. Here I'm kind of deciding which one I want to destroy. Um, it was a hard decision, but ultimately I managed to pick one. Don't worry though, this sacrifice won't be in vain because all the pieces are going to be used to trace out new pieces for the new pattern. Now our cursed cupcake fan favorite, not too bad. Again, I've made similar shapes to this. It's a very simple shape. Um, there's not a ton of detail. If you wanted to have plastic in there, it might make it more of a pain. I usually don't. If it's a small enough piece, it probably would stand up on its own because it's probably not that heavy. If you use a solid material or a pretty solid fabric, I think it would just stand up on its own, but what do I know? Um, this could be a very easy, simple piece of felt. You could either sew that on or like sew on an extra piece of fabric here and do some embroidery for the detail. So based on these, I, even with those, one star, not bad. So after a good amount of time with the seam ripper, I ended up getting all the pieces off separated and then took off the stitches so that they would all lie flat. This means that I can trace them all out and just use them as the pattern itself. Then for the body, we wanted a cube. So I just found a piece of cardboard and cut it into a square so we could make six pieces of this and then stitch them all together. Eventually the square itself ended up coming out to about five and a little bit of an inch. Um, but it ended up being a pretty large body, a little larger than I expected actually. Okay, we have Fox and the Hound. I actually have noses that are a little bit more like this. They're a little cuter, a little more triangular, <laughs> not quite as um, semi-realistic as this one. I have this plush and the eyebrows definitely get me. They are atrocious. The eye patch is kind of ugly and it's kind of like lumpy and looks cheaply made. This redesign I definitely like better. Again, looks more like the Sanchi plush, but I would definitely like to redo like this eye patch. On mine, it's not even like securely attached, you know? Like an anxious girlfriend or something. So definitely making sure that this piece is a little more defined, making sure it's solidly sewn on, um, getting neater eyebrows, the little felt <laughs> the little felt hairs are so bad. They're just bad. Why would you do that? And then mine also has like a little string to hang it up. I don't know, on your car? Maybe it's fake. Whatever. Get that out of here. Um, this piece, pretty easy. You know, once again, just a simple detail piece. Um, this, not too hard to attach. And either felt or minky, depending on how fancy you're feeling. Um, some of these freckles you'd have to sew on. Fine. And then it'd be pretty easy to attach these as felt pieces. Yeah, it'd be pretty easy to attach these as their own individual felt pieces if you 
it would be pretty easy to attach these as uh, individual felt details, especially if you put them on by hand. For those reasons, I'm going to give this one three stars. Not too bad. Uh, the details are nice, but they're not that complicated. For the pants, since I'm lazy, we'll give that three and a half. So here I'm cutting out the pieces that I've traced onto a shower curtain, just because they're pretty cheap. You can get one for like five dollars. It's thick enough to be reusable and pretty sturdy, but it's thin enough to be pliable and you can pin it to stuff without really worrying about it. You can trace it onto cardstock, paper, or whatever, but I just find uh, shower curtains to be relatively cheap and relatively useful to have. After I cut out all these, I'll be tracing them onto fabric and then cutting out the final piece. Now here's where I actually found this to be a little more difficult than I initially thought when I first looked at these. Um, mainly for this detail right here, the jaw and the teeth. So there's a little more detail, kind of this theme of an open jaw. Um, this means you're gonna have to have an extra piece under here just to make sure that this is all solid. And then you're gonna have an additional piece here just to make sure that the, the jaw is in order. I don't know how I would stabilize this or how I would portray this detail correctly. It looks like it'd be a little bit of effort to get this all like lined up correctly um, because Golden Freddy is kind of like askew everywhere. You can kind of uh, take advantage of that because a mistake could just be how you sewed it on. I would say with the teeth, it would look most professional if you had, again, minky or whatever fabric you were using. If you had details with that, flip it outside in and then sew it on. Um, but it's also a little bit more difficult when you're working with these small fabric pieces. Felt would be a lot easier to attach and possibly like hide inside the seam here, but it would look a little bit cheaper and I don't know how much it would hold up. Overall, overall we're going to give this four stars. All right. Um, when I saw this one, I mostly wanted to cry. Um, I think that was a reasonable reaction to have. Mostly for these reasons. So first off, the logistics of this is a little bit difficult to fathom. Um, definitely the small body, you could do as was suggested and put plastic pellets in there. That would be a good use for that butt. However, the head is still really big and I think it was... <laughs> However, the plushie's head is still really big compared to its body, at least in this diagram. And so I personally would not know how to get all this detail on there, um, potentially having little plastic bits too, and still have it be able to sit upright. Maybe if I was able to lean it against something, it wouldn't be that bad. Um, also the teeth details. Ironically, I think this one might be easier than the Golden Freddy one just because this is kind of flat. Like it's kind of got that almost like two and a half D kind of look. Um, so you could kind of get away with just making that like a few pieces stitched onto like a flat piece in general and then have that attached to the head. For all of this wiring and like extra markings and stuff like that, especially in the back. For all, for all the wiring details, for all the wiring details, the patches here, the stuff in the back, this little orb backpack and the wires connecting, possible plastic pieces and the eye details. I'm gonna give this one a five stars. Don't ask me to make this. I bought a couple of thicker strings that I thought could be used as wire. Um, I ended up going with sort of the shinier, uh, thinner one, and that seemed to work pretty well. It was kind of a pain sewing it all onto the body, and admittedly I got kind of lazy towards the end. Um, at first I tried sewing it like consistently by hand, um, but it kept bunching up and honestly I got tired of that. So instead I ended up kind of sewing it, attaching it at the middle, and then at each side. So there's like three points that are stuck on each face of the cube. And then at the end, I just kind of hid them inside the cube and sewed over them. So hopefully that hides most of the seams. Um, it's a little bit janky here. I did sew most of this cube by hand, but I think it turned out okay. 
All right, continuing our lecture with FNAF 2. So here's a great squishy little scrunkly guy. Here's our toy Freddy. I love this chubby little redesign. I think it's great. Um, I will say it's similar again with the hat. There's an additional red detail, but again, not too difficult. Not a huge pain. I would say that the mouth intimidates me the most. You can get away with a lot since this guy is so round. You can just kind of hide mistakes and stuff inside the roundness. And these little button details wouldn't be that bad. You just throw some felt in there. Again, pick a nice satin for a bow. Um, make that bow and I think it would look really cute. There's some cheek details. Again, not too bad. There's just some circles. But the mouth would either require really precise uh, pieces, which I'm not known to do, or maybe a little bit of thread sculpting to make sure it's all, all uh, looking nice and voluptuous there. Two and a half stars. Not bad. I ended up making the ears in about four different layers, the pink layer for detail and then two white pieces. And in order to make sure that the ears didn't just flop over and they were a little more stiff, I added some premium felt underneath. Um, it wasn't that bad cutting everything out, but lining everything up and putting it together was a bit of a pain because my sewing machine is bad. All right, so now onto Toy Bonnie. We have a couple of details here. This tail, I'm gonna be real with you, it's not that hard, but I don't wanna do it. So I'm adding on a little difficulty for that. Second, the ears, again, we want them to be folded over. Now, because they're folded over so much, we actually have a couple tricks we can do here. We can do the same thing as we did before and we can add wiring in there if we want to. I don't like wiring. So what I would personally do and what sometimes plush makers do is you would make this whole piece normally but then you'd fold it over and you'd have like a little hidden decorative stitch inside here to keep this folded over and you could do this on both sides um as well you could do this for other plushies i would say you could do that in this scenario just because they're folded over so much but if you wanted to have them adjustable and kind of quirky still you would probably still have to go with the wiring um we've been over the eyebrows you know keep them snatched these little These little eyelash details are, well, they're canonical. They're a little weird to me. Um, I think they've always been kind of weird. Why did we do that? Why have we put eyelashes on them? Anyways, nose, not too bad. It's just a round nose. Plenty of them available for cheap. The eyelash details, easy. You could put a piece of felt down, or I guess you could embroider them on. Um, and then this tooth probably would just be best as a felt piece stitched on as a detail. I would say three stars. So I had to take the head pieces and first I had to sew the darts together. So this gives the plush a little more dimension in the head. Those are the little triangular cutout pieces. Then I put the right sides of the front and the back head together and sandwiched the ears between them. Um, this is always a little bit of a pain just because there's so many layers and to get the three layers to go together is a little bit difficult. But after doing that, I hand sewed it on just to make sure that it was secure. Here I'm sewing on the two muzzle pieces. So I think I sewed on the top piece first and then sewed on the bottom piece. And then after that, kind of attached it to the head later. So yeah, here it is. On to everyone's problematic fave, Toy Chica. She looks really ugly in FNAF 2, but I can't blame her. We all let ourselves go sometimes. As far as this plush goes though, there are a few details that make this a little bit more difficult than the last chicken nugget. Especially the pants here and the feet, they're not technically that difficult, they are just a little tedious. Cause you'd have to make sure that all the pieces line up and then you'd have more separate pieces. You gotta make sure all the, the stitching lines up and the seam allowance. Anyways, the main detail here, again, the bib would be kind of a pain. I would have to make sure that you print that out correctly. And then the cheek and eye details, not that bad. You have to do the custom like eyebrows and eyelashes again. Really the mouth would be kind of the coup de grace of this piece. Um, the beak doesn't look like a super hard shape. It might be a little hard to get this definition here on such a small piece. Maybe if you used like a really firm stuffing or like some kind of pa padding fabric in there, you get that going. But I really like this, this mouth. It's a lot cuter than what we see in game. Definitely like this one. Overall, four stars. Okay, so now we have Cupcake Part 2. Once again, I didn't think this one was that hard. Same for the other one. 
one star. Now we have Shadow Rabbit. This one, surprisingly, if I take a step back, at first I was like, ooh, that's simple. Ooh, that's all like one or two colors. But no, you're wrong. Look at that mouth. Look at those teeth details. Actually, now that I look at it again, you could definitely get away with some felt action in there. And you wouldn't even have to open up the jaw all the way. You'd kind of do like a little illusion, have like a dart in here, have it sunken in a little bit with a little bit of extra fabric. Yeah, you know, that could not be that bad or it could be really bad, I don't know. We'll give that four stars. I like the odds. So at this point I had been really afraid that the pieces weren't gonna match up at all and that this was gonna be a huge failure, but it actually turned out matching up pretty okay for the janky pieces, so I was pretty excited. Um, so it's getting pretty close to looking like a real thing. Does anybody like Balloon Boy? Does anybody care about Balloon Boy? I don't like Balloon Boy. This is definitely a really cute design. But look at all this. Look at this. You have to get the stripes right. You would have to make sure, and what is this called? Sublimation? You have to make sure you have fabric. On, put it through sublimation. You'd have to have like a little custom plastic piece for the head. You have to have a custom plastic piece for this and for the lollipop, which I personally hate in a plushie, but it's all to your taste, really. It doesn't matter. And then just to add insult to injury, we got a little bit more detail on the foot. Again, I'm trying to get through all this with as little work as possible. I wouldn't even bother to make this. I hate this character. Five stars. I wouldn't make this, but the design is very cute. We have Balloon Boy 2. Four and a half stars. Next. So... I didn't think this one would be as complicated as I did after I started thinking about it, which is a problem. I really should stop thinking about things. First of all, we have the earpiece, which is a little bit simpler. We've got more definition on the head. Um, I don't know if you would need thread sculpting here. If you cut your pieces correctly and you had a nice pattern, you could definitely achieve this, but I'm lazy, so we could always do it in post and have a little Hollywood magic with the thread sculpting. Yeah! We've simplified the cheeks here, which actually makes it easier for me. I like that. It's all one piece instead of having to sew around these corners, which actually, if you're sewing by machine, is kind of a pain yeah! to get all these details properly. Um, this ugly little hair, we remove the pubes off of the top of the head, makes it a lot nicer. And this red accenting, I really like. I would definitely keep this in minky detail just to make sure it matched the rest of the body and the head. Um, for the satin bow, I would definitely pick like a nice material or maybe something that made it look kind of toy-like, so maybe not a satin. With the nose, again, rounding out the nose to make it a little bit more cute is definitely a great detail. Having the snout be a little longer, not a bad choice. I don't think it would make it that much more difficult, but this detail on the jaw is a little bit more than I was expecting. Again here though, I think some creative thread sculpting, um, plastic surgery could really be the answer. Like a little bit of a chin shave off, what do they call it? You shave off your jaw or something? Anyways, I'm sure she'll be fine. Three and a half stars, plus a little bit for the tail. I actually made a big oopsie doopsie here. While I was trying to put on the nose, I discovered that the noses that I had were like three times too small. So it looked super goofy. I ended up having to go get a replacement nose because that just looks terrible. I ended up having to go to Homophobic Lobby to get myself a new nose. That's like the only place near me that has a good stock of anything craft related. Every time I've gone into another store, they just don't have anything that I'm looking for. Anyway, so I finally got the decent nose and ended up sticking it on. So it's attached at the front and then you push the plastic backing in the back and that secures it in place. So you can see that here I'm just attaching it and pushing it down to the lowest setting as much as possible to get a tight fit. Oh man, okay. With it, Freddy. I actually really like the changes to this. So we've got some stitching here to kind of imitate the like falling apart withered look. And that, not hard at all. What you could do here is you wouldn't want to use normal thread. So what you'd want to do is either use like embroidery thread, which is a little bit thicker than normal thread, or you'd want to use upholstery thread. And that's the kind of stuff that you use to fix your couches. Um, if you're a Home Depot lesbian, you might have used it in the past to like refix your furniture and stuff like that if you want to add a new cover or a new cloth. So we also have this teeth action going on here, which again, since I'm lazy, does hurt me a little bit inside. And the jaw is 
a lot more separate. So it's really important to try and get this detail piece. I don't know how to picture this in my head, but I assume it's pretty possible. Um, overall, I'd give this one four stars. Withered Bonnie. This one was one of the few that physically hurt me. Um, as you can see, we got some problems, first of all. So it was suggested that this bit might have a piece of plastic or cardboard in there. I'm gonna give you, I'm gonna give you one good reason why you shouldn't have cardboard. Mold. We love fungus, but not in our plushies. As for plastic, again, I'm not a huge fan of using plastic. Um, I think if you did use it, it probably could be a good solution to making sure that this is like a flat feature detail. Not something I want to do. Um, again, with the upholstery thread, we could definitely make these stitchings really possible really easily. It's like a little cosmetic, a little tattoo or something. And these wires, not so bad. You just throw them in to the seam before you stitch it shut, and then you turn it inside out. And there you go. I'd give this one five stars. Now, while the last one caused me physical pain, this one causes me both physical and emotional pain. But if you close your emotional balance, emotional balance. When I first watched this, this one drove me insane. Trying to figure out how I would get so much separation on the jaw, especially it seems like there's like a flat part over here, plus all of the jaw details. I don't even know what you do for actually no. You could probably use like a really thick yarn um, and like poke maybe like starter holes in here and then thread them through. However, this detail like still is a little bit mind boggling to me. I've never seen anything in a plush like this. Maybe you could get away with faking it, but I don't want to do that. Um, the hair details, not so bad. Wire details, again, not too bad. Um, same problem with the bib, same problem with the teeth, but now times five because you have both this weird beak upper jaw shape and this unique lower jaw shape. So you gotta factor all that in. Honestly, giving me a headache thinking about it. I give this one a six stars. Don't ever ask me to do this. Okay, this is actually one of my favorite redesigns. I really like that addition of the gray ear here. Like, I really like that. Um, even if you didn't have an embroidery machine, you could do some stitching here. You could like, I don't know, Sharpie over it or whatever. I think it's a great detail. And then all this stuff, again, you could do some stitching, um, embroidery, it would look really nice. The jaw here, the teeth, I love this in concept so much, but I know, I know this would be so much pain to go through. Um, and then we got some of this withered look with the pants. The problem with that is that you don't want to cut fabric. You don't want to have open cuts in your fabric. Now I'll tell you what you can do. If you cut the fabric, you're going to start unraveling it. And we don't want that. It's going to wear out over time. Now as I'm thinking about it, if you did make these cuts and it did start to like wear out, it would actually match the withered look. So maybe, you know, I've been playing checkers and she's playing chess. Upholstery thread would look really good with these again. Um, Instead of like a brown for some of the other ones, maybe like a dark red to match the rest of the fur. The teeth. Mm. Now the teeth and the jaw is giving me conniptions. The main problem is this piece, I think. This top piece is really detailed and kind of has an arch up here. I have no idea how to do this. I don't think this configuration art-wise is a representation of how this snout could work. However, that doesn't mean it couldn't work. I think the pieces would look a little bit different, but I think this would look a lot nicer. It would look a lot more detailed than this version. And then the lower jaw actually doesn't seem that hard. It'd probably just be a triangle with a little bit of space on top. So yeah, I'd give this one five stars. Um, I don't think I'll make this one, but I wouldn't mind having to do it. Definitely really cool design. At this point, I had been working on this for days on end, and I kind of was losing my mind a little bit. So for every other piece, I cut out a shape, or I traced a pattern, or I had some kind of idea of what I was doing. Um, but for a lot of these facial details, I just kind of gave up and started winging it. I didn't even like use a ruler or anything, I just started cutting out pieces that I thought would probably be a shape, and then stitching them together and seeing what worked. Okay. This guy, we've already kind of gone over Golden Freddy. 
I would say much the same as the other one. I'm gonna give him five stars, mostly for the teeth and some of these details. It's not necessarily hard, but it's just a little intimidating. We're gonna give this one the same five stars, just in a different color. Okay. I don't even want to talk about this one. Like, this is genuinely so upsetting. Like, the more I look at this... Oh my god. Okay. Now, once again, disclaimer. Please. Disclaimer! I have no problem with this creative design. If this was like an object in a game, love it. This 2D art, I love it. All of it is super cute, really well thought out, and I love the details. But as someone who makes plushes, this makes me want to go Kermit myself into the nearest institution. So let's start out with the shape of the head. Um, all of this? How would I get this much detail? How would I even begin to do that? I have a feeling you'd have to have like one piece here. One piece? One piece here. Stop it right here. Have another piece here. You'd have to make sure this all lines up with these little pieces and it doesn't even look like it's that thick because again it's supposed to be you know like just the inside skeleton of the animatronic the teeth details again a little bit janky but i guess you could figure out something a little bit more cosmetic um these like bars and stuff or or trying to be like the the skeleton of it is really intimidating um and then all of this wiring detail and stuff like don't ask me to make this. Six stars. Moving on. So at this point, I had been working on this project for so long that what I was doing kind of felt like a fever dream. It felt like I couldn't stop. I had to finish this. So at this point, I'm doing the red fabric, taking the cheek pieces and the lip pieces, which I just kind of freehanded and hoped for the best. Now all I have to do is apply the final touches and hopefully the head of this blush should be done. All we gotta do is apply the final touches. All we gotta do is apply the final touches. All we gotta do is apply the final touches. For the puppet, I would not design him this way. But my style of plushie making is a lot different than her style, and that's okay. I do really like keeping these button details though i think these make it look really nice um i think again is a similar problem with the endo ones where i'm just not confident or competent enough to securely say like yeah i could make this and not have it fall over however there is a big like strong triangle thing going on here so maybe it could sit down properly I think also, with this kind of cinched in waist, I know, I know it's trying to be equivalent here, but I feel like this would be pretty difficult, especially with this detail here, plus the tiny waist and like tiny lower end where it's supposed to be resting. Um, all of this stuff, not that hard, I don't think. You could easily, like in fact, you could just cut out a whole thing of felt or like a whole thing of minky. And with some neat embroidery, you could get that looking like an actual mask. And I think that would have kind of a cool effect if it was a little raised. The fingies, I don't know if I'm feeling them, mostly on a effort level. It definitely gives it a cute little nubby look, but again, it's a little more difficult handling little pieces of fabric. So it's possible and it would look pretty good. Um, but it would make it a little more difficult. So we'll give this one a four stars. So at this point, I started to realize that I had made a mistake. And my mistake is picking this to be the plushie that I wanted to redesign. And now that I actually look at it up close, with all of these jaw details, I want to cry just a little bit. Um, this leg right here has some details. We got the body with some of these details. But I think these might not be too bad. I think either doing some tricks with yarn or maybe um, long strips of fabric, we could kind of take care of that. Again, the wiring, not a huge issue. It's not that difficult. This little guy, he's just a cube. He's just a cube. Speaking of the teeth, again, if I'm, if I'm lazy, maybe just felt. But these would look really good as like some monstrous canines. I think if I made the pieces a little bit bigger and just let them shine as like scary pieces, I think it wouldn't be that bad. I'm gonna give this one six stars. 
but I really want to make this. So just in case, because I have a feeling it would be pretty difficult to get the jaw coming across accurately, and based on the materials I have, I'm probably going to go with the simplified um, Funtime Foxy design with the closed mouth, not so much the teeth, and keep the rest of it, since this is just kind of an extension on the cube, and then a smaller cube for the head with some smaller details. Overall, these shapes are not that hard. The hardest part is really going to be the face, and maybe some of these wires, but I think it's achievable. It's me in the future, finally able to wrap up with this monstrosity. Some of the last details that we're going to add are a little circle of this dark gray minky, and we're going to attach where this fake separated leg should be, and a bunch of the wiring in a few different colors. I used green and red and gray just to spice it up. The last other pieces we're going to do are the little bunny tail, and we're also going to do the bow. I ended up using Minky for both just because I wanted it to be consistent, and also it's a pretty good fabric. I was hoping to not have any fraying issues, and Minky actually will not fray when you cut it, at least not for a very long time. So here's just me attaching those last details. I had a lot of fun doing this project, and I'm really satisfied with the results. There were some details that I left out, but ultimately I think this is a pretty close approximation, or at least a good prototype of what this plush might look like. If you guys are interested in the pattern, or more details on how it's made, please comment down below and let me know that that's what you're interested in. Thanks to Bizabelle for making these awesome designs, I still need to watch the third episode, and let me know if you have any suggestions. Yeah, that's right, you get him. Get him. Get Mickey Mouse. Destroy him. Good boy.